Yes. This is good news for the Mets. It's good owners. news for the Mets. It's pretty good news for Irving Picard. Um, the two sides have been fighting for more than a year and now decide to be friends. So <laughs> imagine. Yeah, I was actually looking forward to the trial, but alas, they and settled. They it was going to start play. today. Jury selection, right? It was going right? to start today, and Judge Rakoff is actually, as we know, a, a you know very um, funny judge in some ways. Um, he's, he has a sense of humor. He said, you know, it's a lovely day for a trial, but you know we have something else in mind, which is this 162 million dollar settlement between the two sides. It sounds um, like he's angling for a reality show with all that joking. <laughs> yeah. But this is now $162 million. Mm. Sounds like a large chunk of change. However, it is about half of what the Mets could have been on the hook for. Is that right? right? That's right. So all told, it would have been 300 plus 86 at, at, as of this morning before the settlement. Now they're saying they'll, they'll, they'll agree to pay $162 million. But the other thing about the settlement is that they have about three years to figure it out because they don't have to pay anything until three years from now. Right. And by that time, depending on how things work out with everything that Picard is planning to do and the fact that the Mets owners themselves are owed some money because right. they were investors after all. With Bernie Madoff. They may end up paying nothing really out of pocket or they may end up paying more. It really depends. But they have three years to figure out. So it's a really, you know, it's, it's a pretty good outcome for them. So they've really taken a lot of the risk proposition going forward out of their own pockets and, and off the team's shoulders. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Mets struggling in many ways as they always are. I would say this being a Mets right. fan. But this at least takes some of that yeah. financial insecurity out of the picture. Now for people who might not have understood why the Mets might have been on the hook at mm -hmm. all. Explain to us this concept of willfully blind. Right, so Picard was saying, and he has said this about many investors, that the Mets have been investing with, Mets owners have invested, and their businesses have been investing with Madoff for a very long time, nearly two decades. And Picard was saying, look, you know, the returns were too high, you must have known something, there were so many warning signs, you ignored it. And he was basically saying they, they knew that there something was wrong, but kept investing anyway. And of right. course, the Mets owners have said repeatedly, look, we didn't know. Nobody knew. The SEC didn't know. You know, we really didn't know. So that was that was basically the debate. Um, with the settlement, Picard is now saying, okay, you know, I'm not going to accuse you of that anymore, anymore. And he has, I mean, going forward, he's filed something like, is it like a thousand lawsuits? More than a thousand. More than a thousand. More than a thousand lawsuits. And we're three years in, and there'll be many, many more years to come in terms of litigation. But more than a thousand. To recover this money, and then basically to redistribute this money right. among the pool of people who lost from in the Bernie Madoff scheme, as it's called. Often. That's right, that's right. There are a bunch of people waiting for, for money back. Now, do we have any sense if, if any money has yet been recovered, Joanne? Um, so all told, in my last count, um, the last estimate of how much was lost in total is about 17 point three billion dollars okay he's recovered about eleven billion dollars on paper but whether he, he hasn't actually gotten all the money you know that he's able to he, he's not able to distribute all of it yet but 11 out of 17.3 is what he has so far. So there's a pretty big gap to fill. He's filed more than a thousand lawsuits, and as you can tell from the way this one is going, it's going to be you know it's going to be a long time before he adds up enough to fill that gap. And in terms of the Mets settling, you know, is this going to set a precedent going forward for the other cases you that's think? A, that's a really good question. That's one of the questions we're going to try to explore. Um, I think, you know, this shows that, and this, by the way, this deal was, was done through mediation, right? right? Um, this, this trial was too high stakes for both sides. I think that's what, you know, what this situation is telling us. So I think this could set a template for some, but not all the lawsuits and not all the situations are exactly the same. So so right. it really is a case-by-case -case scenario. And this a little bit unexpected. I mean, people were sort of unsure even through the weekend right. if they were going to go uh, to jury to, and pick a jury today. I mean, no, it I didn't think everyone was. I mean, everyone was expecting trial to start this morning. Everyone was, you know, thinking this was going to last a couple of weeks, so right. it wasn't going to be a long drawn-out thing. But until you know, until this morning, everyone was expecting uh, a trial to go ahead. Right. So it is, you know, but it tells us that this was too, too you know, it was too big of a, you know, gamble to take yeah. for the Mets, you know, where like their their control Coming of the in. team, right? The, you know, the very control of the team was at stake. And would have been a big black cloud hanging over the Mets heading exactly, into the exactly. season.